it seems to me that human communications as we know communications today have created more problems than solved them it is strange that we have used sophisticated phonetic symbols which we call words and language and we think that by using words and language we are able to communicate on the other hand what we find is that by using words and language we have limited our capacity to communicate the reason for this is obvious words mean to a person what that person has associated with those phonetic symbols what are words they are nothing but phonetic sounds and symbols connoting that which comes to that person who uses them depending upon the association of ideas of that person thus each individual has a different meaning for every word because each individual has a separate set of association of ideas with every word it is just not possible for two individuals to have the same association of ideas with a word and since the meaning of words is arising from those association of ideas it is not possible for two individuals to give the same meaning to one word on the other hand we find that people continue to believe that if they have used words they have been able to communicate it is a great illusion in the minds of people that when they use words the others are understanding them in the same sense in which they are using them on the other hand you can easily see that it is not possible for people to give the same meaning to words if i am using certain words now i am presuming that everybody else is understanding the same meaning with these words which i have in my mind forgetting that it is not possible for them to do so because every word i am using has a special meaning arising out of my previous experience and my previous experience is not the same as of anyone else the irony of the situation is that there is no way of checking what the other person is meaning by the same word thus the use of words blocks true communication if we use too many words then we create more discommunication than communication because the further we go into sophisticated words the more unique and individual we make the meanings of those words the less said the better because when you don't say it you at least allow the other aspects of human consciousness to communicate but once you speak out then you restrict yourself to what you have spoken thus the limitations of communication arising out of use of words is a natural phenomenon and has to be expected is there any way in which we can communicate without this limitation it seems to me that it should be possible by other means to reach a level of awareness which is common between people we have heard of a state of being in which one is at the universal mind i presume if one reaches the level of awareness of the universal mind one transfers the understanding to the other person being at the same level of the mind we have heard of communication through love and intuitive abilities i guess if we have love we should be able to have true communication because in true love the ability to identify oneself with the other person is aroused when one can completely identify oneself with the other person communication comes easily by complete transference of the conscious experience so much so that if one is in love one begins to automatically start doing things which the other person would have done one begins to feel in the same way as the beloved would feel in the experience of love the lover disappears and the beloved remains and the experience and feelings of the beloved become the experience and feelings of both that indeed would be a good example of communication human communication then is best achieved through the process of love unfortunately there is very little human love of this order in this world most of the time when we talk of love 
we are talking of attachment. These attachments are not the same thing as love. There is a basic difference between attachment and love. In attachment, there is the consciousness and awareness of two, the ones who are attached. In love, the awareness of two disappears and only the awareness of one remains. If somebody says to another, I love you, you can be sure that is a case of attachment. Because in the awareness of that person, both I and you prevail. That person is conscious and aware of both I and you. If you look deeply into this, you might discover that such a person is more in love with the I than with the you. Therefore, it may just turn out to be another big ego trip, which he calls love. If that I is hurt in any way, then I love you instantly becomes I hate you. This immediate transformation of I love you into I hate you occurs because in fact there was no love in the first place. This was mere attachment. It was self-interested, selfish attachment. Even when a person is not aware that it is a self-interested attachment, even then it is attachment. If there was true love, what would a person say? Would he be able to say, I love you? I doubt if he can ever say such a thing in these words. I doubt if he will have the attention available to say, I love you. I think if the person is really in love, he would be so much filled with you that he would have no time to notice either the I or the love. If I can visualize a person in love trying to say, I love you, I visualize such a person saying, you, you, you. He has no time to think of the I nor of the love that he is experiencing. He has filled his awareness so much with you that he has got nothing else left in the awareness except you. Love is the art, the practice, the science, the experience of completely identifying oneself with the other. It is a real experience of togetherness and oneness. It is not oneness only in the physical sense. It is oneness in the sense of experience. It is oneness in the spirit. It is oneness at every level of awareness. When that feeling of oneness comes, then the physical separation of those who love does not really matter. Because that oneness persists and they stay together in that awareness. Even when physically apart, that oneness goes on. In love, there is no possessiveness. One does not feel that the object of love or the beloved is being taken away because no one can take away true love. Real human communication will come only through this kind of love and not the one that is really attachment. How can we then consider the kind of communications that are going on at present? I have already mentioned that the use of words limits our communication to a level where we are not sure at all what we are saying to each other. Mental transference, telepathy, understanding each other by signs other than language and words do mean something. Some time ago, I was in a hospital for surgery of the eye. One of my very dear relations came to see me and tried to communicate with me with a surfeit of words. Started by saying hi and ended by saying bye and in between the two loaded uh, the communication with words like get well soon and you are very cheerful and you are doing fine and I'm missing you and things like that. Although these words were very sentimental, they did not seem to convey much, much and did not seem to communicate much. Then came a man from a far off area, an elderly man who had a grey beard and who did not know my language. He came and sat near me, he looked at me and his eyes were moist, he stretched his hand and I placed my hand on his hand, he pressed it a little, he turned his face away and walked away without speaking a word. He had communicated a lot. It is not necessary to use any words at all for communication. It is easily seen that both communicated the same thing. But one was able to achieve communication, the other failed and limited it by use of words. Thus there are many ways in which one communicates. 
One of the ways in which people can communicate through love is by loving God. It is seen that if you love God intensely, people love you. And that love need not be expressed, it is there. The more intensely you love God, the more you experience the love of people for you. It is strange that you are doing nothing, but you are getting that communication through love. There are other experiences like that which bring people closer, and no words need be used for such experiences. In modern day societies, the inadequacy of communication through words has created a lot of problems. Words are used by your mental processes. That part of our human consciousness which is constantly using words is called the middle mind or the thinking mind. The thinking mind of a human being is using words for thoughts all the time. Thoughts are a stream of words passing through the mind. And those words move through the mind whether we are awake or asleep, whether we are talking or we are quiet, whether we are walking or lying down. The mind never stops thinking in words. Even when the mind visualizes an image, the image which the imagination can see, it must comment upon that image in words. Even when the mind wants to perceive something that is going on, it must perceive by saying to itself what it has seen. The mind is constantly talking and constantly listening. The mind does not understand anything except when it has spoken and listened to what it has said. All perceptions all sense perceptions are converted by the mind through the process of listening. Because if you merely see a thing and don't allow the mind to interpret what you have seen, you know nothing. You have seen nothing. The interpretative function of mind is performed by the device of listening. The mind interprets perception by recording in words what it has seen or what it has felt or what it has touched, what it has smelled what it has tasted. All sense perceptions are reduced to one single perception of listening. That is why it is said that the soul has ears and perhaps eyes, but no other senses. But the mind has basically only the sense of listening. Through listening, it can convert into meanings all the other sense perceptions. When this mind is used for communication between human beings, it creates problems. The mind by its very nature can only use intellect for communication. Intellect is the power to analyze. Analysis means breaking up a thing into pieces. You cannot analyze anything except by making segments, categories and small pieces of the thing. Opposed to analysis is synthesis which is the function of the soul. The soul likes to synthesize even different experiences and put them into one huge sweep of experience. Thereby the soul can have a communication with the total, with the whole. But the mind must break it up into small pieces and thereby it creates the feeling of violence and tension. When it breaks something, it creates violence and tension. The mind has the capacity to break people's lives, to break people's hearts, to break people's love, to break itself. This terrible destructive power of the mind arises out of its very nature. When the mind is used for communication, it creates all these problems. The mind creates doubts and fear all the time. The mind is constantly creating suspicion and doubt. Even in the case of experience of love and everything else, it will settle down because one has realized that the lover and the beloved are one. The mind steps in and breaks them apart, creates suspicion, misunderstanding, and ultimately break up. The more we rely on the mind, the more we suffer. The mind converts this beautiful experience of love into the ugly experience of attachment. The mind gives the feeling of separateness. So communication with the mind creates all these problems. And we can see them around. Where people try to think and communicate, they always run into difficulties. Beautiful experiences that come to people are destroyed by thinking. The intuitive faculty of the soul gives instant knowledge about a certain event, about a certain person. It is so beautiful that the soul accepts it and rejoices in that knowledge intuitively. Then the mind steps in with its intellect and reasoning power and says, How are you sure? 
It doesn't seem to be consistent with what I have been telling you. It doesn't seem to be all right. And the mind breaks up the beauty of that knowledge which came through intuitive faculties. You have the experience of beauty and joy, the wholeness of life, and the totality of experience. The mind comes and breaks it up and says, where is the beauty? I'd like to see. And tears to shreds that fabric of experience and each piece is reduced to nothing. If you had a beautiful large painting and you saw the beauty of it from a distance, you would be seeing it virtually like you see beauty with the soul. If you cut up that painting into small strips or pieces, one inch square, and even if you saw all the pieces a hundred times over, you would never see the beauty of the painting. Once you break up a painting into small bits and try to see where the beauty lies, you do not see. The mind is trying to break up life into little bits and trying to see where the beauty is and it cannot see the beauty. Beauty has always been seen by the spirit. Beauty has always existed in the total, in the whole and not in the parts. So when we communicate with the mind, we create this problem of destroying beauty, destroying love, destroying the certain knowledge of intuition. Once that happens, we can communicate no more. When I look around people who have been such good friends of mine and see how their hearts are full of love, their thoughts are full of love, their love personified, and yet two people of the same nature have had such big misunderstandings, such big quarrels, fights, separations, one is left in wonder. If one looks into how it happened, one can very quickly see the role the mind has played in this process. So long as mind and intellect are the tools of communication, this limitation will always be there. These problems will always be there. Unless we overcome these limitations by not relying upon the mind and intellect as a tool of communication, we shall never have true communication. We can have true communication without limitations, without problems, only when we communicate with the soul. Only when we have oneness with experience, then we can have communication of oneness. How do we communicate with God? How does a person communicate with God when he realizes God? The answer is, man only communicates with God by becoming God. If somebody were to say, can man see God? The answer is no. Because by the time he has become capable of seeing God, he has become God himself. And before he became capable of seeing God, he was man. God and man are the same thing. Man in his totality is God. The way man can see God is by becoming God. The way man can communicate with God is by becoming God. Similarly, two human beings can communicate with each other only by becoming each other. They cannot communicate in any other way. This is, of course, a very rare occurrence. It is rare because uh, we are living in a society in which education, cultural development, and all other processes of change are only developing our intellect and our mind. There seems to be no attempt to develop the soul and the intuitive faculties and love and beauty. When we transform society by laying emphasis on the need to develop intuitive abilities, by giving equal share to the soul along with the mind, then we shall look forward to having true communication without limitations and without problems. Thank you. If there are any questions, I shall be glad to answer. How do two people that have the experience of oneness communicate then? I mean, two people that, are, that have achieved that state, how do they communicate in the physical body? Whatever one feels, the other feels automatically because they have achieved oneness in awareness. So if one feels love, then the other feels love. Automatically at the same time. When a person is in a state of deception themselves, it's very difficult to communicate truth. Yeah, that's right. When you are in a state of deception yourself, what will you communicate to the others? Now, if you're in the state of deception, is it easier to recognize truth than to communicate? If your intellect does a good job, it can do its best service to you by telling you that this is beyond the intellect. The best contribution intellect makes to a man's growth and spiritual advancement is 
when the intellect tries everything and then says, I can go no more, this is beyond me. When that happens, then a person begins to move away from the intellect and deception to truth. So I guess for human beings who are living in a state of deception, the only thing they can do is attempt to use words that have meaning. What is the best use of words as a human being since we tend to have that form of communication? The best use of words is to say to yourself, I will use few of them. That brings up another problem I can see to a certain extent, maybe through this perspective, and that is certain individuals may consider you antisocial, anti them, anti that. Uh, if you choose not to speak too much uh, in some societies, especially in Western society, People that seem to expect you to talk and speak to or to be sociable. I have not been born in the Western society, but I've spent several years in the Western society. My own experience has shown that when I've talked too much, I've been considered antisocial. The Western people have loved me when I've spoken less. I think you might try and see if there is any other rule applicable to Western society. The point is not whether you are speaking or not. The point is, are you communicating or not? Even in a party, with a number of people present, if you communicate, you are with them. I'll give you one small example. In a party, people are smiling at each other artificially, thinking of something else while they're talking to them. They're gossiping away without even caring to see what the other person is saying. There is no feeling that there is any social relationship. One person is listening intently and is wholly with the person who is speaking. He doesn't speak a word, but he's completely with the person who is speaking. The person who has spoken all the words thinks that this quiet person has said everything. I remember reading a very interesting story of the President of the United States of America, not of India, Abraham Lincoln. In his biography, you will find that when he took the biggest decision of his life, that was whether to wage a civil war against his own people or not. That was the most critical decision of the life of Abe Lincoln. All his advisors and aides stood by trying to advise him, and he didn't have any communication with them. They spoke many words. Mr. President, this is what you should do. Mr. President, we feel this is your mind. Mr. President, this is our mind. It had no impact on the president. He said at this time, only my childhood friend, Brown, should be called from the state of Illinois. And he should come. He alone can advise me. Because he will not advise me in the superficial way in which these aides are doing. In the words of Brown, when he reached the White House, he saw that although it was nearly midnight, the president was still awake, pacing up and down the hall, and very excited. The president did not know what to do. The moment Brown entered, the president hugged him and said, at last you have come. I was waiting for you. Nobody else can give me the decision. Nobody else can give me advice on the subject except you. Unless you had come, I could not make up my mind. And Brown said he began to walk up and down with the president as the president explained the pros and cons of the situation. The president explained what would be the advantages and disadvantages of fighting a civil war within the country. For a couple of hours, the president kept on speaking, analyzing the entire situation in the country, the array of forces on both sides, and how, if certain moves were made, they would be beneficial and the other would not be. Brown kept on listening intently. At last, the president said, for all these reasons, therefore, that is right, that we must wage war for higher values of liberty and freedom that we must wage war. And he said, thank you, Brown, for the advice you have given. Brown had not spoken a word till then. The president took the decision. Do you realize that he could not take the decision if the man hadn't come? The man did not speak a single word. The president got communicated it. with him and got the decision. How do you say that Western societies have a different form of communication? I see it every day. That when people use too many words, 
they they just uh, intellectualize a situation which is not capable of intellectualizing. In fact, when you ask a question like this about social relationships and so on, these are intellectual questions. They are not questions of reality. Let anyone go and tell me that he has tried to be social to people through the intellect and succeeded. And I will show you 20 times more people who will say we only were there with the heart and we were social. It seems to me that when you have oneness with someone, if you had a oneness with everyone, you just have five million different personalities. When oneness comes, then you don't need, you don't see five million people. You see only one. There is no oneness with five million. There is no oneness with two. Oneness is with one. When you have the experience of oneness, you only see one. You don't see two. This is a mental concept. Oneness with two. Oneness with five. That is no oneness. I'm not talking of that. No, you're just trying to reach out and the mind pulls you back. Because the mind asks this question. Is that it? That's not it. Then the mind says, is it? No, it's not. It's pulled you back from the experience. If you have a feeling of oneness, someone who has achieved God realization. Yeah. Not like any of those other people? No. Oh. Why are you feeling happy? <laughs> if you try to love, you'll always feel empty. Because in love, there is no trying. Whenever you try to love, you always feel empty. And love has never come by trying. Love doesn't come by trying. It just comes. Or it doesn't come. When it comes, you haven't tried. When you have tried, it hasn't come. What you're saying is, when you see people, you shouldn't see a person, you should see his soul. Is that what you're saying? If you can, nothing like it. If you have the ability to see the soul of a person, you have made it. Would you say that a person who seeks to understand rather than to be understood communicates better? Yes. A person who is with the other through the process of understanding, loving, communicating, communicates better. Brown was able to communicate with Lincoln and the other people who were unable to do so. Was it due to the closeness, the affinity of the relationship? Yes. They communicated because they loved each other. But Lincoln did all of the talking. Yes. And as talking result, is not important for communication. That's the point I'm making. The talking does not constitute communication. It was the love that communicated. If Lincoln did not love Brown, there would have been no communication. But by the mere fact that they loved one another, Lincoln was able to clear his mind up. That's right. The effect of... Um like if you're in graphics, or if you're in photography, or if you're a writer, or something where you do have to communicate with symbols, or words, or colors. How can that experience of communication be projected into your work? Well, that uh, communication which you are talking of, which you need for your profession, will continue to have the problems and limitations I have spoken of. I have not said that people are not trying to communicate. I am only saying that communication through these symbols have problems and limitations. Mm -hmm. But uh, communication with love transcends these problems and limitations. Mm -hmm. I did not suggest that there is no communication. In fact, the whole world is subsisting on this imperfect communication. And that is why they don't communicate. They have problems. They have limitations. They think they have understood. They haven't understood. There are misunderstandings. They think they have expressed themselves in graphics in photography, in arts, in their professions, and it doesn't work that way. One person says one thing, another says another thing. I went and saw some paintings the other day, and I saw one girl watching the painting, and her mother watching the painting, and I saw the kind of communication there was. On looking at the same works of art, there was no communication. It was easily seen. So this is not... Uh, uh, I'm not making a statement that people are not trying to communicate through these imperfect devices. I am saying that everybody is trying to communicate only with these imperfect devices without recognizing that these are imperfect, that these limitations are inherent while using these uh, uh, devices and tools of words, symbols, language. So if we have the opportunity to communicate with something higher, like love, we ought not to miss it. If it comes, 
we should not miss it. It's the greatest thing that can happen to a person to have even a little experience of that which is true communication.